Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Get Into It. I'm Ramona Remesat, intuitive guidance coach, speaker, co-author of two Amazon bestsellers, and we're back with part three of this month's New Year Starter Guide, where I'm sharing with you some of the best known tools and tips that I know to get your year off on a, a really great starting point. Uh, so last week, if you were with me, we covered off how to plan using the energetic signature of each day of the week and why Mondays are actually the worst days to start anything new. So if you haven't had a chance to watch that episode, go back and check it out. I am gonna be following up and doing the blog this week on that. I'm a little bit behind. Sadly, uh, my mother-in-law passed away and we were out of town for her funeral last week. So I'm a little bit behind getting uh, all this info out to you, but you can go scroll down, see the video. However, watch the blog because I'm gonna expand on the video and I'm gonna share which angels you can actually also work with for each day of the month or of the week um, to help you as well. So like I said, today we're expanding on this. We're gonna continue on to part three of the New Year Starter Guide. Today we're gonna talk about how to plan using the periods of Mercury retrograde and the moon cycles. And I'm gonna clear up some myths or some misunderstandings around the moon cycles. So hopefully uh, you'll find that really helpful and interesting. Um, so as I get out a new calendar every year, one of the first things that I do is I mark off full moons, new moons, and periods of Mercury retrograde, okay? And it's not that hard. A lot of calendars actually will already put on the full moon dates. Some don't always have the new moon dates. Um, and then periods of Mercury retrograde, you can easily Google those to look them up. And those typically happen three times a year for about three weeks at a time. And so let's start with Mercury retrogrades because it's, you know, it's becoming more known. Like, it's not like people look at you like you have three heads when you talk about it anymore. <laughs> um, but uh, it's kind of got this doom and gloom, you know, persona about it. People think, oh my God, it's Mercury retrograde. My computer's gonna crash. My technology's gonna go haywire. Everything's gonna go to shit. And that's not necessarily, you know, what happens. There is um, more miscommunication during those periods, typically because Mercury is the planet of communication. And during periods of Mercury retrograde, it seems to slow down, stop, and spin in the opposite direction. Now, of course, that's not actually what's happening, but that is what we mean by a retrograde cycle. So, because again, Mercury is the planet that rules communication um, and sort of technology, things in that arena can go a little bit crazy. So it's always a good idea to really, um, you know, if you're planning, Mercury retrograde is not a great time to begin something new, to launch something new, okay? so as you go through your year and you're kind of planning, keep that in mind. It's also, you know, you know, if you have to travel, then it's not a bad thing. I've traveled plenty of times during Mercury retrograde with no, you know, no <laughs> horrible things that happened. Um, but, you know, you do want to make sure if you are traveling during Mercury retrograde that you have printouts of all of your confirmations, you know, not relying on your phone for certain things. Okay, so just keep that in mind uh, for that. Um, not a great time to sign any contracts, so to be selling a home or a vehicle or maybe taking, starting another, a new job, like we're actually signing the contract if possible, kind of wait out that phase and then move forward with that. But what you can plan for for Mercury retrograde periods is great time to review things, kind of go back. It's great to do anything with the RE, you know, so revisit, revamp, revise, restore, recharge, reboot yourself. So knowing that that is what Mercury retrograde is good for, you can plan around that, right? Um, get it on your calendar, be aware of it. Again, you know, don't go into it with a self-fulfilling prophecy if this is gonna be horrible. You know, we wanna plan and, and go in with best intentions, but being prepared. Okay, so that's what I wanna say about Mercury retrograde. Now let's talk about the moon. Oh, we just have an amazing full moon and lunar eclipse. I don't know if you got a chance to see it, 
Uh, it's still gorgeous. Last night's full moon still was amazing in the sky. I just, oh, there's something about the moon. I could just sit there and just soak it in for hours. So let's talk about how you can also plan using the powerful energy of the moon because it is an energy powerhouse. And I always say, why would you want to work against the cosmos when you can work with it? You know what I'm saying? So we've typically heard full moons are great for recharging, right? So chart recharging things like your crystals. It's not 100% accurate in a way. So here's what I mean by that. It's actually better to put your crystals out the night before the technical full moon. That's kind of what we call recharging night. Okay, so it's not gonna be a big deal if you do it on the full moon, but you know, if you wanna go buy the book or whatever, that's sort of when the energy is the ripest for you to recharge those things. Okay, hi Ariana, I'm so sorry about your knee. I hope you are managing to get some rest. And I know it sucks when you can't, you know, be up and about and doing things, especially with a young family. But really, uh, obviously this is a bit of a message from the universe maybe to just take it easy. So I hope you're doing that. I know trying, that's the key, right? Um, so I'm just getting into talking about full moon cycles and how we can really work with that and how full moons, it's actually the day before the real full moon, that is the recharging energy is at its ripest. So that is the time to put your crystals out, to recharge, even yourself. Get outside if you can under that beautiful full moon and absorb it. Just soak that energy in. I mean, I'm not just getting shivers right now just saying that because it feels so, so, so good. So if you if you think of it, you can. If you forget, it's okay to put your crystals out the next night on the real night of the full moon. And you don't have to do this all the time either, especially if you're not really working with your crystals. I mean, if you're something like a, a massage therapist, a healer, and you're constantly working with your crystals for yourself and for clients, then you do want to get into a regular routine of recharging them, clearing them, cleansing them, all of that. But, you know, if it's you and it's just yourself, you can get away with doing it, you know, whenever you feel like they need to be done, right? So um, don't beat yourself up if you're not getting to them all the time, even myself, because I have a lot. So it's a big undertaking <laughs> for me to do that. All right, so we've got the night before the full moon is, re is recharging night. Then, of course, the full moon night is releasing night. Again, you've probably heard of this. That's when you want to give over anything that's not serving you, get rid of things, get rid of actual clutter, write things down on a piece of paper that don't work for you anymore. Um, you know, if you want to burn them, fine. You want to rip that paper up, fine. If you want to just you know, um, fold your little piece of paper up and put a crystal on it and set it in the windowsill where the moonlight's gonna shine on it, fine. But honestly, you don't have to do any of those things. It's if you like ritual, if that makes you feel good, by all means, do those things. But the act of really just sitting down with a pen and paper and writing out, what, what am I holding on to that needs to go that I really don't need to carry anymore? Maybe it's the resentment you've been holding on to or guilt about something or disappointment about something or usually it's emotion-based, right? Because we don't have really healthy ways of releasing our emotions. We're stuffers. We just keep stuffing it down and stuffing it down and think of a trash bag. You know, if you don't take your trash out, what's that going to be like after a couple weeks pretty disgusting right but that's what we do to ourselves we just keep stuffing it down and stuffing it down pretty soon that trash bag's gonna bust wide open and there's gonna be crap everywhere so think of every full moon as a period to take out your emotional trash okay so it's a really good idea to get in the habit of doing that now we have the New moon night where it's a dark moon, no moon in the sky. This is manifestation time. This is a wonderful time to just sit in meditation, to close your eyes, to bring to life in 4D everything that you desire at its, you know, at its most optimal level. Don't be closing your eyes and dreaming of what would be okay or good enough. Really like what would be awesome. Right? And like I said, bringing it to life, using every you know, uh, sense as you can. Does it smell like something? Does it feel like something? Does it taste like something? Right? Using, like you're immersing yourself in a movie scene. Okay, so that is what you can do on the, the new moon to really get clarity and bring this in. And by the way, 
you know, you don't really want to just do this once a month on the new moon. If you spend some time in this place every day, I mean, your manifestation is going to go off the charts because when you're doing that activity, you're emitting a signal to the universe. It's like the, I always say it's like the bat signal, right? Ta-da, shining it out. The universe is like, hey, what's that? Then sees what you're trying to draw in and it's going to respond to that by the law of attraction. It sees you, it hears you. It's like, oh yeah, we can help you with that. And it starts to, you know, respond and get the wheels in motion to help you pull all of that into your life. Okay, now I want to talk about half moons because nobody talks about this. The moon isn't just full or dark. There's phases as it creeps into each of those. And on the half moon, uh, think of the half moon. If you turn it sideways, it kind of represents the bullhorns, right? So this is power night. This is all about power. And using the power of the half moons to power through any fears or apprehensions that you have. So if you're trying to move forward on something and you're feeling hesitant or you're fearing, feeling fearful around certain things, use the half moon time to release the fear, to call in Archangel Michael, because again, he's the one that removes fear, gives us courage and confidence to go forward on our life path. Um, and really harnessing that moon energy of the half moons. All right, Ariana started reading Get Rich, Lucky Bitch, and she talks about consistent rituals, like you said, for, hold on, I have to click here, see more, for manifestation. Yeah, you know, it's just these cues, right? Rituals are really just a cue or a way for us to be more conscious because life is so busy. It's easy to get out of, you know, get away from things and forget about things. I mean, so many things that we know to do in all different situations for all different kinds of things, but if it's not a habit, we forget. So building in these moon rituals is a way of making it a habit or making it, you know, something that we do over and over and over again consistently so that we can reap the rewards and benefits of it. Yeah, but if you're not a ritual person, like I said, don't feel like you have to go and start, you know, burning your list of things you want to release or any of that. Like if that's not you, that's fine. But if you can at least write the list, that's where the power lies again, because as you're releasing that out, it's, it's taking out that emotional garbage like I was talking about. So I hope that makes sense, right? And you know, just kind of keeping track every night, you know, glancing in the sky, what's the moon doing now? That can also be a trigger for you to be like, oh crap, it's a full moon, or oh, I see it's coming on the half moon. This is time I can use to really you know, get into my fierce warrior self and connect with that part of me to really move myself forward and get over any of these fears or hesitations that I'm having and, you know, really, really embrace, um, you know, that, that part of me, right? Because we all have that warrior energy in us, but oftentimes it's kind of stuck down too because of all of our other roles and responsibilities and our mind chatter is really loud sometimes, right? And so, it's, it's hard to sometimes, you know, overpower it. But if you stand and, and you visualize yourself as, you know, your Xena warrior princess self or Wonder Woman self or whatever it is, then, you know, you can really conquer some of that limiting crap that goes on in your head, right? So working with the moon cycles and with uh, periods of Mercury retrograde can be extremely powerful and just really give you that extra boost with what it is you're already doing anyway. Like I said, let's work with that cosmic energy rather than working against it. Makes sense, right? So that's what I had for you today. If you liked it, share it out, please, and thank you because let's get everybody doing life easier. Again, that's what I'm all about, teaching you to work with your intuition, your inner guidance, um, other metaphysical tools. It's really just gonna make life so much easier because nobody wants more complicated. I mean, I don't. Pretty sure you don't, right? <laughs> so next week, we're going to wrap up this series of New Year's Starter Guide. Next Tuesday, uh, let me just double check. I think I have to switch the time on you guys um, because of my son having a dental appointment. So I think we're going to aim to do it at noon Eastern time, which is 10 Mountain. And we're going to talk about clean and sage how to just really set yourself up perfectly to now go full throttle into the new year um, and really get this year started off on the right foot, like I said. So you won't want to miss that one because I'm going to share some things too that you probably didn't know. 
All right, and uh, like I said, it'll be at a new time though. So it'll be at noon next Tuesday instead of at one Eastern or 10 Mountain. So share it out guys, get into practice. We can still work with the full moon energy even though it was technically on Sunday. Uh, the moon effects usually last a couple of days before and a couple of days after. So if you miss the actual time and day, don't panic. We can still kind of ride the coattails of that. But you may want to already start writing down, okay, when is the new moon going to be for this next little bit? And when are the half moons? So get those on your calendar, start planning with those energies, like I said. And I'd love to hear, hear how that works for you. Come back here, comment, let me know, send me an email, send me a direct message. Um, I love getting uh, client, you know, people's feedback. So share that with me and that would be fantastic. So all the best this week, guys, and make it great, Ariana. Take good care of yourself, sending you lots of love and uh, hope for speedy healing. And we'll see you next week. Take care.